For hundreds of years, it was assumed that measurements of space and time were constant. Even the likes of Galileo and Newton thought this. One morning, when Albert Einstein was only 16, he came up with a question while taking a bus ride to his workplace. How does light look when an observer travels near the speed of light? This question was the beginning of the theory of special relativity. Einstein discovered that when traveling close to the speed of light, the speed of the light didn't change. But this seems counterintuitive. For example, if you cycled along a moving car, from your reference frame the car would appear to move slower, but with light, this isn't the case. This led Einstein to come up with two postulates of special relativity. Number one, the laws of physics are the same in all inertial systems, where an inertial system is one in which isolated bodies don't accelerate. And number two, the velocity of light in empty space is a universal constant. An interesting consequence of these postulates is that when moving at relativistic speeds, an object's length measured by a stationary observer will be shorter than if the same object were measured at rest. This is known as length contraction. But how does length contraction work? Imagine you go to Tesco and buy a 2 litre bottle of Coke. Would it be possible to shorten the length to a smaller 500 milliliter bottle using the principle of length contraction? Let's find out! Say the bottle is lying parallel to the x-axis at rest in an inertial system labelled as S. The left end of the bottle is labelled xb, and the right end is labelled xa. The length of the bottle in the rest frame, L0, is then xa minus xb. In the rest frame, xa and xb do not change with time, and therefore do not need to be measured at the same time. However, if the coke bottle is moving to the right with a velocity v, then xa and xb must be measured simultaneously. When the coke is moving to the right, the frame is labelled S prime, the left end XB prime, and the right end XA prime. In S prime, the length of the moving bottle L then equals XA prime minus XB prime. These measurements of XB prime, XA prime, XA, and XB are related by the Lorentz boost between S and S prime. The vector on the left is the spacetime coordinates of one end of the bottle in the rest frame. The vector on the right is the coordinates in the moving frame. The matrix in the middle completes the Lorentz transformation. Note that because the bottle is moving only along the x-axis, there are no y or z elements or components in the equation. The quantity denoted by gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. This expression pops up a lot in special relativity, and so it's given this symbol to make life simpler. We get the same transformation describing xb. So equating for the top two rows, you get these simultaneous equations for xa and xb. Subtracting xb from xa, we find that L0 is equal to gamma times xa prime minus xb prime. We've already defined xa prime minus xb prime to be L, therefore L0 is equal to gamma L. Finally, we get that L is equal to L0 times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. As v is always smaller than c, the length of a moving object is shorter than the rest length. This is, however, only noticeable at relativistic speeds. Length contraction occurs because if it didn't, the velocity of light would be different in S and S prime, which Einstein discovered isn't a physical possibility. Going back to the coke, how fast would you need to throw the bottle? We measure L0 to be 35 centimeters and L to be 25 centimeters. So rearranging for V over C, it turns out you would have to throw the bottle at 0.7 times the speed of light for it to contract by that amount. Good luck. But really, how often are you throwing coke bottles at 70% of the speed of light? What's an actual example of special relativity being displayed in the real world? When cosmic rays hit the Earth's atmosphere, elementary particles called muons are produced about 10 kilometers above the surface. These muons have a very short lifespan in the order of microseconds before they decay into other particles. Even though they are moving very close to the speed of light, they do not exist long enough to reach the surface of the Earth. And yet, they are regularly detected to actually reach the surface. How is this possible? Length contraction. In the muon's frame of reference, the Earth is moving towards it with a very fast velocity. Due to length contraction, the distance between the muon and the Earth is decreased to only a few hundred meters instead of 10 kilometers. This is a short enough distance for the muon to reach the surface before decaying. Length contraction is a groundbreaking idea that changed the way we think about space and time. It seems complicated, but it's relatively simple. Thank you.